Hello, you're watching ESPN FC, Kay Murray and Stevie Nickel with you. And we're going to talk about defenders because what we're seeing, Stevie, whether it's the transfer market or even the rumour mill, defenders right now are garnering high fees, high valuations. So we thought we'd look at some of the Premier League's defence and rate them. Um, should we do um, kind of school ratings or should we do it out of 10? What would you prefer? Um, yeah, let's go for uh, out of 10. All right. So let's start with Man City. You've got Kyle Walker, Ruben Diaz, John Stones and Imerick Laporte, Cancelo, Zinchenko. You've got lots of players there that you could put in to the defence. What mm. would you rate them? I, I think you've got to go nine, haven't you? They're clearly no question. Um, the best defence in the Premier League at the end of the season, in my opinion. Um, Stones and Diaz. An incredible partnership, absolutely a rock. You know, defensively, Walker on that right-hand side, nobody's getting past them. Uh, and you've got Kinsella, uh, who you're just talking a proper footballer. Maybe, maybe defensively, there might be a slight question mark. Uh, but that's why I've gone with 9 out of 10 for City. Listen, they, they won the Premier League primarily because that back line uh, defended. Um didn't let anything through pretty much and, and was just just the, the building block that, that set them up for the Premier League title. So they are, in my opinion, right now the best back line. So I'll go with nine out of ten. So you said right now, and we're, we're being a bit cheeky in this edition because we're actually putting some transfer targets in with some and we're also going to put new signings in, even if they mm -hmm. haven't played yet for their side, like Rafael Varane, yeah. obviously we know he's gone to Manchester United now. So with Manchester United, you've got Aaron Wan-Bissaka, potentially Kieran Trippier, Harry Maguire, Raphael Varane, Luke Shaw. It's got to be up there with a high rating, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're probably just under City uh, with an eight. Um, Wan-Bissaka defensively, absolutely sound. Questionable with a ball at his feet. Uh, Varane and Maguire as a partnership on paper looks about as solid as it as it's possible. You know, you've, you've got pace and you've got strength in Maguire uh, and you've obviously got huge amounts of experience between the two of them. Uh, and Luke Shaw has just had just an outstanding uh, season, not just with uh, Manchester United, but, but with England as well. So there's no reason he's not going to be the Luke Shaw that we saw last season as well. So, yeah, that it's a good-looking defence. Uh, if Kieran Trippier comes in, They'll probably lose just a smidgen defensively, but he's way better with the ball uh, at his feet. So, yeah, Manchester United uh, are definitely up there. Did they get a rating off you? Yep, I gave them eight out of ten. You just gave them one eight below. out of ten. Yep. Just one below. All right, so I'm going to talk about your old team now. I want to talk about Liverpool. Let's just look. The defenders are coming back who've been injured. Let's just imagine full fit defence at Liverpool. What's their rating? I think right now you've got to say eight. Um, you know, we can't we can't mark them on on two seasons ago uh, or 18 months ago, should I say? Uh, because had we done it then, it would have been a 10. You know, Van Dyke and Gomez were just sensational. Uh, didn't put a foot wrong. Uh, would they couldn't be penetrated. I mean, it was just it was just top class. But both of them have had serious injuries, both Gomez uh, and Van Dijk. Uh, and even though they may be 100% fit, the types of injuries they had can can take just a little step away from, from particularly your pace. Uh, so I think we have to be careful that we don't, we don't straight away see how brilliant they are because of how good they were 18 months, two years ago. So I'm going to say Liverpool's an eight uh, because no question. If, if particularly the centre-backs come back 100%. Of course, you've got Trent Alexander, who, who got an injury with England. So you've got three of the four, uh, Robertson being the only one that, that is kind of on a level par. Three of the four coming back from, from significant injury, shall we say, uh, particularly the two centre-backs, you have to be cautious. Uh, and so that's why I'm giving... Liverpool's back line and eight. They've also got a new signing in Canati. Uh, again, though, we don't know how he's going to acclimatise to the Premier League. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with an eight for Liverpool. 
All right, Chelsea might have themselves a new signing if the rumour mill is to be believed. Jules Kunde has said that he's very interested in going there. Let's imagine he does. They've got um, Christensen, Aspilicueta, Rudiger. Where would you rate these? Oh, this is a tough one. I'm going, to, I'm going to go eight again, but I'm going to go with an asterisk because no question, uh, defensively, second part of last season, a bit like City. They were excellent. Absolutely fantastic. But you've got Aspilicueta, who, in my opinion, lost a little half a yard at the end of the season. He looked stamina-wise a little short. He, he, was on his, he was on his knees a couple of times towards the end of the season. Uh, he is, he's 31. Um, I think there's question marks about how he can last the season. Uh, I think you've also got to look at Silva. Thiago Silva is 36 years old. Um, it's not about pace, it's about using his brain, but on the occasions that he had to, to make challenges and cover, he was able to do it, uh, but that can't go on forever. Rudiger came back incredible. Again, second half of the season was 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 fantastic. Uh, Christensen, you know, I, I'm not quite sure. He, he's only 25. He seems to have been around forever. And, and there's always talk about him leaving. You know, it doesn't seem to be a regular. You know, he'll play five, six games and then you think this is it. And then all of a sudden, he's either injured or, or he's out. So I think there's question marks over Chelsea's defence. But as I said, you can't. You can't not think how solid they were at the end of last season. So I, I'm going to say an eight, but that's that's with an asterisk. Yeah, all right. What I'm going to do with the next two is rather than get you to rate them, I want to see who's higher than the other. I'm going to bring you the two North London clubs in Arsenal and Spurs. But we've got the little caveat in that because we are bringing rumours in. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? Because let's imagine. So Spurs are said to be looking at Bologna's um, Tommy Yasu. Romero's also been brought up there, Christian Romero from Atalanta. And then there's the usual suspects that you've got there with Arsenal as well, uh, Bayerin, Gabriel, Ben White, let's put him into the mix there, Tierney. So who's ahead of who? I'm going to say Arsenal just. I mean, there's questions whether Bellerin is actually going to be moving. But and Gabriel and White, you've, you've got two solid Center backs, you know, Gabriel's big and strong. Um, he's consistent, he's not fantastic, but he gives you a, he gives you a level of performance, shall we say. And Ben, Ben White, I think, is going to be a, a, a better than average center back. I think he's got a nice left peg, I think he passes the ball well. Uh, sometimes he can, he can be in the wrong starting position, particularly. Uh, but the two solid center backs. Tierney at left back speaks for itself. If I think about Spurs, I'm thinking shambles. I'm thinking who starts? Sanchez, again, a guy who ever since he got to Tottenham doesn't seem like he's a starter. Plays a game, he's out again. Plays two games, he's out again. You've got Dyer, who I don't think is a centre back. Uh, I don't think he's 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 got enough pace to play centre back. Um, and where does that leave us? Tanganga, uh, more of a right back. But then they've got Aurier, who's a right back, Where's but I don't think he's a particularly great right back. I mean, I just I, I just see Spurs struggling big time defensively. They need a complete new back line. Uh, and of course, what makes it worse is the guy behind them in your ease is, in my opinion, just beginning to slip a little bit. You know, at one time he was in the top five keepers in the world. I don't think he's there anymore. Well, that's going to be interesting to see this season. Just want to throw Leicester into the mix uh, for the last one here. Where do mm. you rank them? Let's get a rating for Leicester. Um, I, th I think I think I'm I'm going to say they're they're a seven, just under the other three. Um, but they've got potential to to get better. Um. You know, a lot will depend on Johnny Evans' fitness because he kind of he kind of talks the, the young guys around him through, but there's loads of potential, loads of ability. Um, and other than Johnny Evans, there's pace as well. So listen, I think I think Leicester's a, a back line that, that is improving. Uh, I think they lost too many goals when it mattered most. 
in the second half and particularly at the end of last season. But as I said, they're, they're getting better. They're growing together. Uh, and if Johnny Evans can stay fit, he, he can mould them uh, while he's on the field. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.